This is part 53 of AngularCRAD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to create an observable from static data in an array. Along the way, we'll also discuss the two most common issues that you'll run into when working with observables in your Angular application. Now, if we take a look at the employee service that we've been working with so far in this video series, Notice at the moment within the employee service, we have our employee data hard coded. We have a private field here, list employees, which is of type employee array. And at the moment within this array, we've got three employee objects. And if you look at this get employees method, all it's doing is returning that array. So the return type of this method is employee array. Now what we want to do is instead of returning an employee array, we want to return an observable of employee array. At this point, you might be wondering, why do we have to return an observable of employee array instead of just an employee array? Well, this is because in a real world application, we would not have data hard coded like this in the Angular service. We retrieve it from a database by calling a server-side service using the Angular HTTP service. The Angular HTTP service returns an observable. We discussed observables and calling server-side service using the Angular HTTP service in part 27 of Angular 2 tutorial. In our upcoming videos in this series, we'll discuss calling a server-side service. So in preparation for that, we want to create and return an observable from this get employees method. So first, let's change the return type of this method to observable of employee array. We don't have this observable imported yet. So let's import it from rxjs for slash observable. Notice Visual Studio Code has automatically included the import statement right here. Now, to be able to create an observable, we need the rxjs off operator. The syntax to import off operator is slightly different. Import within quotes rxjs for slash add for slash observable for slash off. Now, there are several ways to create an observable. One of the simplest ways is by using this off operator. Now, if we take a look at get employees method, notice we have a red squiggly. That's because our method return type is observable of employee array. But at the moment, we are returning a plain array back. That's the reason we have this red squiggly. So let's create an observable. For that, let's use observable. And on that, we use the off operator that we have just imported. And to this, we pass the array. Notice now the red squiggly is gone. Now, if we take a look at list employees component where we are consuming this get employees method, notice we have an error. That's because at the moment, if you look at get employees, it is returning an observable. So when we have an observable, we need to subscribe to that observable. And the way we do that is by using the subscribe method. So on the get employees method here, we call the subscribe method. And when the observable completes, we are going to get employee list back. So let's call the parameter employee list. And we want to assign that to the employees property. So this dot employees equals employee list. Now let's save all our changes and then take a quick look at the browser. Now let's navigate to the create route. Back to the list route, we see the full list of employees right here. Let's search for a specific employee. Click on to view his details. Back to the list. The search term is retained. The list is filtered. So everything seems to be working fine as expected. Now, if we take a look at our employee service, at the moment, employees data is hard coded within the service. So when we call this get employees method, it returns the data immediately without any delay. But in a real world application, we retrieve this data from a database table by calling a server side service. So there may be some network latency and we may not get the data immediately. So let's introduce some artificial latency by using the rxjs delay operator. First, let's import the delay operator. Let's make a copy of the import statement. And instead of observable, we use operator. And the operator is delay. 
and we want to delay this observable by 2 seconds. So we specify the time in milliseconds. Notice now we don't see any employees displayed. When we launch browser developer tools within the browser console, we don't see any errors either. So let's understand what's going on here. Now the client code that consumes this get employees method is present within ng on a net lifecycle hook. Notice here we are subscribing to the get employees method and here we have an anonymous function. So this is the method that is called when the data is returned after two seconds by this get employees method. So at that point when the data is available, we are setting that data as the value for employees property. But during those two seconds until which the data is returned, this employees property is undefined. Now the important question that we need to answer is what happens to these four lines of code during that wait time of two seconds? Well, this code will be executed asynchronously. It will not wait for the two seconds to complete. And we know during those two seconds while we are waiting for the data to be returned by this get employees method, you know, this employees property is undefined. And we are setting that as the value for filtered employees property right here. So filtered employees property is also undefined. And if we take a look at list employees component view template, which is right here. Notice we are binding to that filtered employees property and since it is undefined, meaning it doesn't have any employees to display, we see a blank page. In short, we have this problem because this code right here, you know, this line of code is being executed before this line of code right here. Let's actually prove this. First, Let's modify this anonymous function so we can include multiple lines of code. We have this red squiggly because we are missing a semicolon. Now let's log the time this line of code is executed. So let's use console.log and this is happening inside the subscribe method. So let's use the string subscribe. And to this, let's append the time it's executed. I'm using date function for that and converting that to time string. Let's do the same within this else block. So we want to know the time this line of code is executed. And this is happening inside the else block. So let's include the string else block. Notice first the code in the else block is executed at 12.07.37 seconds and then two seconds after that, that is at 39 seconds, the code that is present in the anonymous function that is passed as a parameter to the subscribe method is executed. So the point that I'm trying to prove is this code right here is executed after this piece of code and that's the reason we don't see any of the employees on the page. Another common problem that you might run into is when you try to access any of the properties of this array, you will get undefined errors. Let's actually prove that. Let's try to log the length of this array. Notice the error we have in the browser console. Cannot read property length of undefined. So this dot employees is undefined and we are trying to access length property of the undefined object and hence we have this error. Now to fix these errors, we have to make sure this block of code executes after this line of code and this code is present in this callback function which is passed as a parameter to the subscribe method. So what we want to do is cut this block and then paste it inside this anonymous function that is passed as a parameter to the subscribe method. So now all these lines of code will be executed synchronously. So these lines will be executed after the employee's property is set with the data returned from the service. So let's save our changes and then quickly test it. Notice now 
we don't have any errors within the browser console we see the list of all three employees and these three lines are executed almost at the same time synchronously at 2606 first the subscribe time then the length of the array and then the else block time Now we don't want to log all that to the console anymore so let's get rid of these console.log statements now let's quickly make sure our filtering still works exactly the same way as before first of all we see the full list of employees let's search for John when we remove the filter we see the full list of employees again now when we go to the create route and then come to the list route notice for two seconds we see the partial page and then when the data becomes available that's when we see the full list of employees we don't want to display a partial page to the user while we are waiting for data. We'll discuss how to fix this using the resolve guard in our next video. So, the easiest way to create an observable from an array is by using observable of. And if you want to introduce some delay, use the delay operator. Now, if you have some code that you want to have executed synchronously, after the observable is returned from the service, then you want to move such code into the function that is passed as a parameter to the subscribe method. We have seen this in action just now. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.